Hey guys, we did a video a while back of unboxing our EDM 900 and uh, we've installed it and it's been about a year, year and a half. Uh, we've really been enjoying the airplane and I wanted to do a video uh, sort of reviewing the things about it that we like and that we don't like and um, get you guys caught up. Hey guys, I'm Phil and this is our Project Skyline 182. Uh, our videos that we put out in the past are of us enjoying the airplane and flying and uh, the ones in the future will probably be a little bit about maintenance and uh, upkeep of the airplane but also some flying and destinations things like that so if you like general aviation flying and all the things that go along with it then I think our videos might be something that you will like. So this is our EDM 900 installed here. We wanted to put it in the same spot as the uh, the old engine instruments. The only problem was this uh, panel that goes around it doesn't really fit right the way it was cut out and things like that. So we'll have to come up with a solution that kind of finishes off the panel a little bit better. But in the meantime, this is what we have to work with. So we go ahead and turn it on here. When we first fire it up, you get the uh, loading screen and things like that. Whenever you're flying, when you uh, first start up, it's going to ask you if you want to refuel. If you select yes, it's going to it's going to um, have you put in the, the total amount that you refueled. So, just going over the screen, you have the manifold uh, pressure up on the top left, RPM, just right next to that. Uh, the layout in the beginning kind of seems like it's a little bit small, but um, overall, you get you get used to it. It, it really fits the panel well. Uh, we have uh, percent horsepower, OAT just below those two. All your engine, t all your engine temperatures, the uh, EGT, CHT is below that, and then um, you can cycle through different um, cylinders there. Just uh, to the right of that, voltage 12.5 and amperage. Uh, before that, we just had the uh, an amperage needle that was, uh, I'd say, pretty unreliable. So this um, voltage and amperage is definitely a step up the uh, also outside air temperature uh, we do have up here in the corner we got our outside air temperature there but it's always nice having it uh, here on this um, engine analyzer we have our fuel usage there uh, with this installation we put in a, um, a fuel flow uh, so we have fuel used fuel remaining and time to empty uh, The uh, on the top top right there, you have oil temperature, oil pressure. Uh, we have added carb carb ice there, so you can see the temperature of carb ice. Uh, fuel flow. That's from the uh, little fuel meter that we added up in the front, and then fuel quantity. So we used the uh, size fuel senders, and uh, I when we were installing this EDM 900 it looked like there was a lot of information going on about people having a hard time setting this thing up and uh, going back and forth with settings with um, EDM and the, the old resistance type fuel senders so we just decided to um, really couple this thing with some modern um, fuel senders the, the fuel senders were one of the big reasons why we did this um, upgrade as well because uh, the fuel centers that we had before were really unreliable. Um, you know, sometimes they read empty when they're half full. Uh, basically, everything was wrong until they read zero and zero works. So, um, the size fuel centers, uh, they're really nice, uh, easy installation, if direct fit replacement. Uh, there's, no, um, there's no internal voltage or anything like that going in the tank like they, like they talk about. And... Um, Overall, I would say that the, the the size fuel senders are easily worth the money that uh, that it costs to upgrade or with this upgrade. Uh, I think at the time we paid about seven or eight hundred dollars for a pair of fuel senders, and uh, of everything that we've put on this plane, that's probably the best value that we've that we've got out of anything. So, some of the things that uh, I like about this um, EM nine hundred. First of all, uh, just having a real good understanding of what's going on with the engine. Uh, you, it's almost like having a window right inside, you know, of, of what's going on while you're flying. All the parameters are right there. Uh, we also have this uh, 
engine light here that'll come on yellow or red if there's a warning or caution of anything that's out of parameters. Uh, makes it makes it really easy to call your attention to look over to see what's going on. Uh, that's that's probably the best the best thing that's going on with this uh, engine monitor. Also, uh, engine trend it records all the data and downloads. I'm going to show you how to download it here in a minute. I want to download some of the data and look at um, some of the data that we have. We we had a uh, voltage, either voltage spike maybe. I want to check to see if something like that happened. We had some issues with that landing light and um, our, our strobe beacon light uh, was popping the circuit breaker. So I just wanted to see if anything funny was going on with voltage and this uh, EDM uh, 900 records. It records all that stuff. So that'll be good. Uh, some of the other things I like about this uh, is the 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 carb the carb temperature is really really kind of a nice feature the uh in the past i didn't have carb temp and i've never had carb ice but uh, as much as i talk about it it's nice to really see a visualization of what's going on you know different different um modes of flight with uh temperatures in inside the carburetor and when when it can be carb ice and when when it might not be the uh Fuel quantities on this uh, this EDM 900 are extremely accurate with a couple with these uh, size fuel senders. Uh, the used and remaining and time to empty, uh, it all seems to really, really perform well together. Um, some of the longest trips that I've done is about uh, three hours at a time. And uh, it's, it's really nice, you know, being in the air for three hours and you know exactly what your fuel load is. You don't have to guess, you know, am I burning 11 and a half or 12? You know, this, all of this stuff that's displayed on here, it's, it's exact. So it tells me my fuel flow because I have the fuel flow gauge. Uh, it tells me exactly, you know, with the fuel floats, they're, they're very accurate. If I, if I dip the tanks right now, that uh, left main 12 gallons and the right main 16 gallons are going to be um, just about dead on. And uh, so those are some of the things that I really like about it. The things that I don't like about it, and there's not very many, uh, I've had a problem with this uh, percent horsepower, and I don't know if it's just the setup that I haven't really set it up correctly yet, but um, when, when I went up to, the installation manual tells you to fly between five and 8,000 feet, set it to 70, uh, percent power per the per the owner's manual and then type in the settings on this uh, EDM tell it that you're at 70 percent horsepower so I did that and the the range on this percent horsepower never seems to be about seem never seems to be right uh, it's about uh, you know 60 to 70 percent at full power on takeoff and you know about sea level uh, when I'm up at cruise, you know, it reads about 30, 30 to 40 percent power, and uh, at zero, at zero. Now, I, I've sent a couple emails, you know, to ask them about it, and uh, I think the 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 people that are there to help, they uh, they respond, uh, they've responded pretty quickly, and they've been helpful. Uh, I don't know if uh, if it's if it's something that I've done with this installation. Uh, so I've thought that maybe the installation manual, I'm going to go back and take a look at it and find out that if I'm supposed to set two points, uh, you know, at different, different ranges in that cruise power, or if I just set one point, um, they gave me a file to, um, put on to this EDM and update it to make sure that it has all the correct files on it. I think uh, through emails, I get the feeling that there's a little bit of disbelief that the percent horsepower doesn't read correctly. So there's a chance that I'm doing something wrong and uh, I'll, I'll check that out here shortly and um, go up and do my do my settings and see if that makes any change. Uh, other than that, everything else on this works pretty well, works very well. Um, percent horsepower is the only thing that I've had a problem with. Uh, one of the things that I, don't like is the uh, the fuel quantity sends an alert to the uh, over here to this light 
and it'll flash yellow at about nine, 10, nine, 10 gallons per side. Um, that's about a quarter capacity, you know, 20 gallons. Uh, returning from a long trip, the there's no there's no way to mute the light. So if the if you get down to about 10 gallons and it starts flashing, it's gonna keep flashing on and off every uh, every few minutes, every few seconds uh, as as you fly along. There's no way to some some of the other larger aircraft, you know, King Airs, they have a um, once once you get that low fuel light, you can just kind of mute it uh, because you've got the warning already instead of having flashing all the time. And uh, I, I don't think there's a way to um, really get around that on this. So uh, while you're taxiing, if you have you know 10 gallons aside, uh, 20 gallons total, it'll it'll flash. You know, making turns, things like that. So that's the only other thing that's really uh, it's not that big of a deal. But if uh, if I could do anything different, I might do something like that where uh, I could turn off that alert for low fuel once once i've seen it um there there could be you know something with the faa that they don't allow taking turning it off um, but other than that uh, that's that's pretty much the only other thing all right guys so that's our edm 900 and uh we've got a little bit more learning to do but we'll keep you updated on some of the things that we find out and we will see you guys later